everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today is going to be a little bit different. Instead of teaching you how to do something, I'm going to give you a small tour of my recorder collection. Um, I thought it would be interesting for you to see what recorders I have and I'm going to tell you which ones are my favourites. And helping me today is John. Tell them like why you have so many recorders and what they all are. Oh yeah, how many do I have? One, two, three. I have 16 recorders. Well, 16 wooden recorders. Three sopranos, five altos, two, three tenors, a bassette and a great bass and a contrabass. As a professional recorder player, you have to have all of the different sizes of recorder. Uh, the smallest I have is the Sopranino, but actually they come smaller. And the biggest I have is the contrabass, but they also come bigger. This is so that you can play the whole range of music. And the recorder as an instrument is also centuries and centuries old. And obviously it's developed a lot through that time. So I have, for example, Renaissance model instruments and Baroque model instruments and then more modern instruments. Okay, my smallest recorders are my Sopraninos. There is a smaller one called a Garkline, and I used to have one of those, but I actually gave it to one of my friends. So I have two Sopranino recorders. This one I've had for a really long time, for about 10 years now, and it's by Kung, and it's made of bubinga wood, and I really like it because it actually has quite a mellow sound. And the reason I have two is because Composers love to write pieces with two sopraninos at the same time. So I figured I'd better have a decent sopranino as my second one as well. And this one is by Aura. Actually, it was pretty cheap. It was about 90 euro, so it's not a handmade instrument, it's a factory made one. But I really like it, it's really nice. We're moving on to my soprano rec recorder. Mine is by Yamaha and it's Grenadilla wood. And I've also had this one for about 10 years and I really like it because it's a very strong and bright sound. this not as much as I use my other soprano and that is my Ganassi soprano by Stefan Bletzinger. I love this recorder so much. Most recorders you buy will be modelled after the design of someone either from now or from history and we call these ones Ganassi models because they were modelled after the design from Ganassi who is from the 16th century and this one actually has two under joints so when you play like this, you're in modern pitch. And if you swap them over, you go a semitone down to Baroque pitch. It's really loud. And if you look how wide the bore is at the end. I use my Renaissance Soprano recorder for Renaissance music but also for contemporary music and also pop music. I think the sound of it is perfect for these because it's so strong. Um, and if you're thinking is that okay to use a Renaissance instrument in contemporary music or a contemporary instrument in Renaissance music, at the end of the day it's your choice. If it's your instrument you get to decide what you want to do with it and if you think yes that sounds great, go for it. This recorder is not mine, it belongs to John. Can I show it? You may. I may. This is uh, one of the Mollenhauer, uh, the Adriana Brokink dream flutes, and I think they're great. I make sure that all of my students have these ones when they're first starting out. They have a pear wood under joint and plastic top joint, which means you can wash this part, and this part still sounds really nice. Mm. 
This one sounds a bit breathy, but I think because John's been playing it all the time. Yeah, but I like the Dream instruments a lot. They're also quite wide board, like the Ganassi ones, um, but they're so kind of chromatically fingered, like my modern one. So this is a good one. Oh. We are going to the alto recorders. The first one is an alto in G. Um, that means that when you close all the holes and you blow, you get a G. My alto in G was also made by Stefan Bletzinger, who made my Ganassi Soprano. This is um, a transitional model, which means it was not strictly Renaissance and not strictly Baroque, but a bit in the transitional period in between. They say it's perfect for playing Van Eyck, which as recorder players we do all the time. And um, it's also in 440, it's a modern pitch. And I got that because I wanted to also be able to play with uh, modern instruments or harpsichords that were in 440. I have one G alto and I have four F altos. This is my first F alto 440, just your standard modern alto and I bought it 12 years ago um, and it's by Yoav Ran who is an Israeli maker and I just love it and it's a Dana model which means that the, the beak is quite long and I like that. If you hear when I blow quite hard it's very quite a rough sound. This is because I have basically just used it so much. I replaced this alto with this one and actually this one is also by Yoav Ran. I went to the early music market in Utrecht and there were loads of recorder makers and I spent the whole weekend there just trying instruments and going everywhere and in the end I went back to the same maker because I just love his instruments. a lot and then I don't always want to be using my concert instruments when I'm teaching so I got uh, also I got this one second hand this is another Mollenhauer Adri's drone dream flute it's the same model as this but just all in wood um, I think I paid a hundred euros for it second hand and it's great <laughs> then of course I have all of these instruments in 440 I'm going to be playing a lot of Baroque music, so I also have my alto in 415 in Baroque pitch. And this instrument is by Joachim Roma. I really like this one because you can blow a lot, it's got a very warm rich sound and it's a denim model which makes it also very lovely in the high notes and i just love it then for baroque music i have an alto in 415 and i also have a voice flute a voice flute is a tenor in d so a regular tenor recorder has the bottom note of c this one has the bottom note of d but then it's in 415 so it comes out at a C sharp. Basically if you take this instrument you can play Baroque music that goes down to a D which means you can play all flute music and the voice flute was used a lot in the French Baroque and they call it the voice flute because they said it was the instrument that came closest to the human voice. <laughs> My voice flute is made by a British maker called Tim Cranmore and he's always been really great and friendly and helpful whenever I had some requests like oh can you tweak this tuning or something he was always really happy to do it which is great. When you buy a recorder, a handmade instrument, you want to have a really good relationship with the person that poured their heart and soul into making it. So this is my voice flute next to my tenor. For a semitone, that's quite a big difference. My tenor, this is by Yamaha, 
So actually it's a factory model and then it was um, born separately, I guess, but I, I love it. I play mainly contemporary music on this model um, and I've played a lot of contemporary music so I think this recorder's getting quite tired by now, but it's still always been good to me. I would say my tenor is one of the instruments I use the most. And it has um, a double key down here. So if I want to play early music on a tenor, I have my Raffi tenor. This just looks like a stick. This was made by Levergi who is a maker from Italy, and it's based on a design by Raffi. Um, these are just straight instruments, and you can see that, um, maybe you can see, the labium, which is the hole where the sound comes out, is actually on the back. And you blow into this kind of weird hole here at the top, and then also, the thumb hole is way higher than the rest of the holes, so you have this kind of hand position which actually feels quite natural. The really nice thing about Raffi instruments is you can play very, very high and quite softly. Then we're gonna go to my bass recorder. My bass recorder is also by Yamaha. Officially they're called Bassett recorders because the basses go lots and lots higher. So let's call them Bassett so we're clear about it. This is the smallest of the basses. You can play it in two ways. You can either play just the hole in the top there. That's how I like to play it. Or you can also play with a crook. So you put this on top. I don't like playing with the crook as much. I don't feel as much of a direct connection with the instrument. It's personal though. If you like the crook better, great, use it. And actually it makes it a bit easier to hold the instrument. With the crook, the instrument's lifted a bit higher, which might be easier for your hand position. And with the bass, I have two middle joints. This one here is 440 modern pitch, and then we have a longer one 415 baroque pitch. That's just in case you ever feel like playing the CPE Bach trio sonata for bass recorder and viola. Then we're gonna go to my uh, two pet sold recorders. These are also recorders. I did not make them myself. They are not from IKEA. They were made by a German recorder builder called Mr. Petzold, and he's been making them since I think the 70s, and they're actually based on Renaissance organ pipes, which were square. This is um, a bass recorder in C. This is the contrabass in F. Actually, there's also one recorder smaller, and there are two bigger, so I just have two of them. Can't afford all of them. The C bass sounds like this. I like pet songs because you can also really use the key work. And you can do a lot of articulation. Base recorder is one octave lower than the bassette and it's two octaves lower than the alto and it's three octaves lower than the sopranino. I am 163 centimeters tall. You can move the mouthpiece. Um, I'm going to play it in a bit of an ungainly way now. <laughs> Um, on my Wish 
watch list right now. Aside from Pet Sold, there are a lot of new kind of models and experiments being made in recorders, so I really love to get into those. So from Adriana Brokink, who makes the Dream Flutes, I would really love one of her Eagle Alto recorders. Um, I would love to try out the Martin Helder Tenor, that's a new kind of tenor recorder. And you should check out Susanna Froelich, who is a recorder player from Germany who is making a lot of great research into those recorders. She has a blog, you should check it out. I would love, I would love to have a Sopranino in 415 so that I can play lots and lots of Vivaldi concertos, concertos. Titanium race bike with full Ultegra. Yeah, I want one of that. As a reward for helping me film, I promised John that we could play a duet. I will be playing the Zanzito phone. everybody for watching my latest video, my little tour on my recorders. I'd love to hear what kind of recorders you're playing on at home, so why don't you tell me about it in the comments. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do this by clicking John. Say bye at the same time as me. Right now? Bye, yeah. One, two, three. Bye! bye. No, that was bad. One more time. Okay. Bye! I was ready. What else? Ready. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.